hello in this module we'll focus on the functional architecture of enterprise systems which follows the column style as we have seen in the previous video of this series okay let's start over the years enterprise systems have proliferated to cover almost all functions of modern organizations we see such systems not only as generic ones with several special uh, special functions but also specialized to support specific process in certain business domains or industries so on one side we have rather generic enterprise systems that aim to support almost all processes like erps like crms customer relationship management systems supply chain management systems project management, project and portfolio management systems, e-commerce systems, knowledge management systems, and so on and so forth. Many more. On the other side, we also see those that are tailored for the needs of companies in certain domains or industries like banking and banking and finance services management systems or hospital information systems or student information systems or learning management systems like the canvas that we use at our university. And by the way, such systems do not necessarily have um, modules that are specific to the domain, but may also feature modules that support other processes as well. I mean, when you implement a hospital information system, it is likely that it comes with an additional uh, set of modules regarding hospital human resources or, or, or finance or procurement. And many uh, ERP vendors uh, today, like SAP or Oracle, have such tailored system for different markets. Now, modern enterprise systems offer functional system modules for almost all functions of organizations, from core processes to supporting ones. Of course, supporting process or a supporting a specific supporting processes in one organization can be a core one in another one. Huh? So we see core modules of, for instance, sales and marketing. But depending on how important that function is for a specific company, we also see the, uh, this particular function as a, as a separate but, but yet integrated system such as uh, the customer relationship management system. So depending on their need, the company decides if a single module uh, of sales and marketing with relatively limited functionalities will be sufficient or whether it would need a number of modules uh, or an integrated system like the CRM. Huh? And this holds for many, many uh, functions that I will display uh, now. I mean, I mean, many of the functions have separate systems if you want it to be supported more. For instance, the production, you can see the production module or product life cycle management systems, which provides additional functionalities or procurement uh, as a, as a uh, or purchasing as a module. Or if you want more, then you might need an integrated set of modules, uh, which are called supply relationship management uh, system. The same goes for distribution and inventory management. If you're in a supply chain, then you may be uh, looking for options for supply chain management system finance and accounting it's always uh, been a core module customer services which are also supported by crm systems human resources management modules or systems in their own corporate performance governance port project and portfolio management if you work in a, a kind of uh, project environment or project uh, if your work entails project uh, projects and business intelligence uh, nowadays enterprise asset management or if you're selling online something your products or services e-commerce modules and many many more um, so what I'm going to do I'll very briefly talk about the following specific uh, enterprise system modules or systems starting with the customer relationship management systems <clears throat> but first, a bit of a background. Now, customer relationship management is based on the promise uh, that the, uh, the organizations that understand the needs of their customers are best positioned uh, to achieve sustainable competitive advantage in the future. 
and this premise is particularly vertical for companies that <clears throat> have, for instance, frequent contact with the customers or have large heterogeneous customer base and, high, uh, and have high potential for product and service proliferation. And in realizing this particular premise, uh, CRM systems play a very critical role. Now, CRM systems simply support almost all CRM processes, as you can imagine, and typically structured into three main components, operational CRM, analytical, and executive uh, CRM. The operational CRM supports the operational processes regarding CRM, as its name implies. It supports not only the front end, that's, uh, that is the processes on the direct contact with the customers, but also the back end processes such as uh, entering and tracking customer data, interaction, call records, and meeting schedules, and, and whatnot. It is sometimes also the case that the front end comes as a separate subcomponent, which is also called as the collaborative CRM. Hmm? So this component deals with the interaction points between the organization and, and the customer. Um, the outlets are referred to as channels, and common channels include interacting ones, for instance, phones or online chats, but also the others, such as emails. <clears throat> collaborative CRM often integrate these channels via, uh, via an integrated CRM portal that that provides a gateway for customers to, to access information and to interact electronically with the company. Now, the second subcomponent is the analytical CRM. And it provides tools for the collection and analysis of data gathered, dur uh, gathered during the operational processes, which are supported by the operational CRM and there. And the sim simply, it, 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 the analytical CRM simply helps to create a better relationship with the experience with the customers. And topics as, such as data mining and business intelligence or business process intelligence are particularly relevant in this subcomponent, as you can imagine. Some features that are enabled by, sub, uh, by, by, by this particular subcomponent include, for instance, lead generation, which is basically um, uh, something that helps finding potential customers or cross-selling, which suggests related products or services to a customer who is considering buyer, uh, buying your product. Um, one of the first companies that has implemented this feature is Amazon, for instance, and, and if you're looking for a product in Amazon, based on the past sales data, it recommends related products to you. Uh, the last subcomponent is, is the executive CRM, which simply uh, facilitates performance monitoring and decision making based on the operational data. For instance, it can provide a snapshot of the progress regarding, uh, for instance, uh, revenue in regards to a single customer or the entire organization. Three subcomponents operational, analytical, and executive. Now, this particular figure shows the functions and relationships of these three components. In the operational CRM, a number of front and back-end processes such as sales management, complaint management, campaign management, service management are supported and the data is managed in the customer transactional database. But please note that this database is not a separate database in itself, but it's a part of a large uh, enterprise database. It's often logically separated, not physically separated. On the analytical uh, uh, CRM part, we see a list of supported features like market research, loyalty management, customer profiling, etc. And on the uh, executive, uh, executive CRM uh, subcomponent side, this is typically fed by the uh, analytical component through the feedback management there. Um, and to provide information about customer related performance indicators such as propensity, the trends meaning, or, or revenue. Now, that was briefly the CRM. Now, let's look at another one. Uh, and and, and, and the, the, uh, the supplier relationship management systems, which is basically uh, driven by the CRM mode. Hmm? Like the case for, for caring your customers, uh, the companies care for their suppliers uh, uh, this time. So they focus on keeping the supplier satisfied by 
evaluating and categorize, categorizing them for different projects and also uses information to optimize uh, supply selection, for instance. A similar concept is partnership uh, or partner relationship management, uh, uh, which focuses on keeping vendors satisfied by managing alliance, partner and reseller relationships. I will not go into the details of these systems. I'm just naming this particular one to make you aware of their existence. But I will spend a little bit more time on the system that follows this one, which is this one. But first, let me discuss about the common or let me give some background about the common organizational model and the characteristics of different levels when it comes to decision and information requirements. So we need that background to have a better understanding of the information, uh, the, the particular system that we will discuss in a minute. Now, what we see here is uh, the Antonia's organizational model, with uh, which features three levels, operational, tactical, and strategic. Uh, uh, in fact, this is something I assume you have seen in other courses. And we also know that the organizations are typically structured into functional units, huh? like, like, like this one, sales, marketing, human resources, production, finance, and so on. So when we consider these levels, from the perspective of decision requirements, we see that the decisions that have to be made uh, becomes much more structured as we traverse from the strategy to the operational level. Consider, for instance, uh, uh, for a company that consider, for instance, a company that produces bikes. Huh? At the strategy level, an example decision to be made could be, uh, shall we produce electric bikes? Huh? At the operational level, on the other hand, an example decision would be, what should be the best replenishment uh, level for item XYZ? Hmm? The second one is much more structured than the first one and can be precisely calculated. So when we look at the information that's needed and that should be provided by an information system to, to make uh, these decisions at these levels, we also see critical differences. At the lower levels, the information needs are much more pre-specified, scheduled, and detailed, and, and much more frequently uh, needed. They have a narrow scope, like, like only these products show me something, and they typically rely on historical data. Huh? At the higher levels, on the other hand, the information that's needed are typically ad hoc, unstructured, summarized, rather than detailed, uh, and much more forward-looking and has a wide scope. Unlike the case in the lower levels, at this level, and the information is also needed about the external environment. Right. So, in order to decide if you should produce e-bikes, for instance, uh, you need info about your competitors, market conditions, customer profiles and customer needs, etc. Um, now, in order to fulfill the information needs at higher levels, we have executive information systems. And these systems facilitate and support senior, man, uh, senior executive information and decision-making needs. So they aggregate summaries of the past organizational data, which results in the operational layer, and possibly uh, external data to monitor the status and, and, and project the future with the aim to improve strategy and planning. Uh, these systems are commonly considered as a specialized form of decision support systems, in fact. And by the way, you can also see executive information systems as a module in an ARP or a CRM system or uh, supply, uh, supply chain management systems under such names like corporate performance management module or strategic enterprise management module or as we have seen in, a, uh, in, in past slides, executive CRM module. Um, here are some examples of dashboards of executive information systems. Very core component of executive information are the dashboards, as you can imagine, which features things like indicators, charts, maps, uh, tables, filtered tables, summary tables, and so on. Now, we also need to see some futures, 
features of executive information systems and discuss about some related considerations. First, as always, executive information systems help to align vertically uh, operations with the strategy. No, huh? we're talking about vertical integration. Second, as we have seen, the executive decisions are usually unstructured and are made using consolidated internal and external information. So, the information for strategic decisions often originate not only from the internal operations but also from external sources like markets, competitors, independent market researchers, and, and so on. Third, user interface and user friendliness is very important in such systems. They have to show only necessary information without causing information overload. Providing timely summary information is also important so that decisions are given uh, promptly, obviously. And as these systems require summarized or synthesized data, the company needs mature internal processes supported by other enterprise systems like ERP so that the company produces relevant and reliable data to executive decision making. Uh, another important feature is, uh, is that these systems should have excellent integration and data exchange properties and this is particularly important if the system is deployed as a separate system on top of existing enterprise systems with which it should seamlessly integrate and as a final point these systems usually require powerful infrastructure um, simply because gathering filtering analyzing summarizing data uh, are very resource in, um, intensive tasks as uh, another type of enterprise uh, system um, in fact, it's an inter-organizational system, is a supply chain management uh, systems. In the modern business world, the companies should focus on their core competencies and partner with other companies that can perform the rest in a better and more efficient way. I mean, for instance, as a manufacturing company, you don't do distribution delivery of goods yourself. Huh? You partner with a logistic company which makes use of the economies of scale and is very likely to be more efficient and capable than, than you are when it comes to distribution or delivery of goods. Now, this has a few consequences. Uh, first of all, it increases the number of companies involved in satisfying customer demand and second, um, it reduces management control of daily logistic operations. So supply chain management system aim to improve the trust and collaboration among supply chain partners and to integrate the processes across the entire chain to a wholesome system and thus improving supply chain responsiveness and efficiency what are the key functionalities they include the following so they enable sharing business data with stakeholders across the supply chain network and that's perhaps the most important feature. Second, they allow for central management of inventory, shipping, and order performance. Third, they allow forecasting and planning uh, supply and demand across the entire chain. Now, ERP and supply chain management systems of today are mostly integrated, and we can mention uh, uh, and we can mention about two main sub modules subcomponents of uh, uh, supply chain management system the first one is the planning which simply helps for forecasting and replenishment or supply demand planning the second is the execution part so the planning and execution obviously which tracks the physical status of goods the management of materials and financial information involving all parties in the chain good now these were the these were some important and, and relevant information uh, enterprise systems that you should be aware of as a near future industrial engineer or, or managers or technology professional. That is it for now about the uh, enterprise system functional architecture. See you in another video.